welcome learners to this session on environmental chemistry. So far we have studied about atmospheric pollution wherein we learnt about tropospheric pollution and stratospheric pollution. In this session we will discuss about water pollution, causes of water pollution, international standards for drinking water, then soil pollution wherein we will be discussing about pesticides and industrial pollution. So, let us start with the understanding of water pollution. Water is essential for life, without water there would be no life. We usually take water as granted for its purity, but we must ensure the quality of water. The pollution of water originates from human activities through different paths pollution reaches surface or ground water. Easily identified source or place of pollution is called as point source of pollution. For example, municipal and industrial discharge pipes where pollutants enter the water sources are point sources of pollution. Whereas, non-point sources of pollution are those sources where a source of pollution cannot be easily identified. For example, agricultural runoff that is from farms, animal or croplands, then acid rain, storm water drainage from streets, parking lots and lawns etcetera are non-point sources of water pollution. Here you can see in the table that major water pollutants have been listed along with their sources. For example, we can say that microorganisms originate from domestic sewage and organic waste originate from domestic sewage, animal excreta and waste and decaying animals and plants and also from discharge from the food processing industries and factories. Then there are plant nutrients which are originating from chemical fertilizers. Similarly, toxic heavy metals are entering into the water causing its pollution from the industries and chemical factories. Then sediments which are arising from the erosion of soil by agriculture and strip mining and you know that pesticides are also chemicals which are used for killing insects, fungi and weeds. Then radioactive substances also cause pollution and these originate from mining of uranium containing minerals and heat also is a pollutant. It is arising from water used from cooling in industries. Now after understanding different pollutants and their sources, let us see how water pollution is caused. We will discuss now the causes of water pollution and here you know the first category is that of pathogens. These are very serious water pollutants and are disease causing agents and are called pathogens. Pathogens include bacteria and other organisms that enter water from domestic sewage and animal excreta. Human excreta contains bacteria such as E. coli and Streptococcus faecalis which cause gastrointestinal diseases. The second category is that of organic wastes. The other major water pollutant is organic matter such as leaves, grass, trash etc. They pollute water as a consequence of the runoff. Excessive phytoplankton growth within water is also a cause of water pollution. These wastes are biodegradable. The large population of bacteria decomposes organic matter present in the water. They consume oxygen dissolved in the water. The amount of oxygen that water can hold in a solution is limited. In cold water, the dissolved oxygen that is DO normally called can reach a concentration up to 10 ppm. But the oxygen in air is about 2 lakh ppm. So, see the difference. That is why even a moderate amount of organic matter when decomposes in water 
can deplete the water of its dissolved oxygen. The concentration of dissolved oxygen in water is very important for the aquatic life. If the concentration of dissolved oxygen of water is below 6 ppm, then the growth of fish gets inhibited. Oxygen reaches water either through atmosphere or from the process of photosynthesis carried out by many aquatic green plants during the daylight. However, during night the photosynthesis stops, but the plants continue to respire. This results in the reduction of dissolved oxygen. The dissolved oxygen is also used by microorganisms to oxidize the organic matter. If too much of organic matter is added to water, then all the available oxygen is used up. This causes oxygen dependent aquatic life to die ultimately. Thus, anaerobic bacteria which do not require oxygen begin to break down the organic waste and produce chemicals which have a foul smell and are harmful to the human health. Aerobic bacteria which you know which require oxygen, they degrade these organic wastes and keep the water depleted in dissolved oxygen. Thus, the amount of oxygen required by the bacteria to break down the organic matter present in a certain volume of sample of water is called biochemical oxygen demand that is BOD, it is one of the parameters. The amount of BOD in water is a measure of the amount of organic material in the water. In terms of how much oxygen is being used or is required to break it down biologically. Clean water would have BOD value of less than 5 ppm, whereas highly polluted water could have a BOD value of as much as 17 ppm or more. Now coming to the chemical pollutants in water, you know that water is an excellent solvent, thus water soluble inorganic chemicals that include heavy metals such as cadmium, mercury, nickel etc. constitute an important class of pollutants. All these metals are dangerous to humans because our body cannot excrete them. Over the time, it crosses the tolerance limits. These metals can then damage our kidneys, central nervous system, liver etc. in the body. The acids like sulfuric acid from mine drainage and salts from many different sources including raw salt used to melt snow and ice in the colder climates that is these salts are sodium and calcium chlorides, these are water soluble and hence act as chemical pollutants. The organic chemicals are another group of substances that are found in polluted water. Coming to the petroleum products, you know very well that these also pollute water and petroleum products pollute many sources of water when major oil spills occurs in oceans. The other organic substances with serious impacts are pesticides that drift down from sprays or runoff from the lands. Various industrial chemicals like PCBs which are polychlorinated biphenyls also act as water pollutants because these are used as cleansing solvents. Then detergents and fertilizers, these also add to the list of water pollutants. PCBs are suspected to be carcinogenic, that is they can cause cancer. Nowadays, most of the detergents available are biodegradable, however, their use also can create the other problems. The bacteria responsible for degrading the biodegradable detergents feed on it and grow rapidly. While growing, they may use up all the oxygen dissolved in the water. This lack of oxygen kills other forms of aquatic life that is fish and plants. The fertilizers contain phosphates as additives you know. The addition of phosphates in water enhances the algal growth. Such profuse growth of algae 
covers the water surface and reduces the oxygen concentration in the water. This leads to the anaerobic conditions commonly with accumulation of obnoxious decay and the animal death. Thus, bloom infested water inhibits the growth of other living organisms in the water body. This process in which nutrient enriched water bodies support a dense plant population which kills animal life by depriving it of the oxygen and results in the subsequent loss of the biodiversity is known as eutrophication. At this stage, it will be important for you to know about the international standards for drinking water. These are very important. We will discuss about the fluorides first. For drinking purposes, water should be tested for fluoride ion concentration. Its deficiency in drinking water is harmful to the humans and causes diseases such as tooth decay, etc. The soluble fluoride is often added to the drinking water to bring its concentration up to 1 ppm or 1 milligram per decimeter cube. The fluoride ions make the enamel on the teeth much harder. By converting the hydroxy appetite, you can see the formula here which is present in the enamel on the surface of the earth into much harder fluor appetite. The formula is given if you compare the two formulae, you will see that now the 2 OH has been replaced by the 2 fluorines in the fluor appetite. However, fluoride ion concentration above 2 ppm causes brown mottling of the teeth. At the same time, excess fluoride that is over 10 ppm causes harmful effect to the bones and the teeth as reported from the some parts of the Rajasthan area. Coming to lead, another water pollutant, the drinking water gets contaminated with the lead from the lead pipes and are used for transportation of water. The prescribed upper limit for concentration of lead in drinking water is 50 parts per billion. Lead can damage kidney, liver and reproductive system, etc. Sulfates, again these are very important parameters to know the presence of these ions. Excessive sulfate that is greater than 500 ppm in drinking water causes laxative effect. Otherwise, at moderate levels, it is harmless. Nitrates, the maximum limit of nitrates in drinking water is 50 parts per million. Excess nitrate in drinking water can cause diseases such as met hemoglobinemia, which is often called blue baby syndrome. Now, other metals also cause pollution and they also have their limits. The maximum concentration of some common metals recommended in drinking water system is given in the table here. You can have a glance at the values given against each metal and know their permissible limits which can be present in the water. Now you can also visit some local resources of waters in your area and observe if these resources are polluted, unpolluted, slightly polluted or highly polluted and you can discuss uh, such issues in your classroom. At water or by checking the pH of the water, you can see that whether it is polluted or not polluted also. You can also document the name of the river or the local resource which you have visited and report about its pollution level to the authorities or to the school authorities you can say or to the local governance uh, bodies. And uh, then uh, you can compare that which water is better to drink or not to drink. To take care that water is not getting polluted, you should also take certain more measures. These are that you do not dump waste into a household or industrial drain which can enter directly or indirectly to any water body such as a river, pond, stream or a lake. 
use compost instead of chemical fertilizers in the gardens. Avoid the use of pesticides like DDT, melathion etc. at home and also try to use dried neem leaves to keep the insects away from the sources. Also you can add a few crystals of potassium permanganate or bleaching powder to the water tank of your house. So this was about water pollution, some important points you should take care of. Coming to the another category which is pollution caused by various uh, factors in the soil known as soil pollution. India being the agricultural based economy, it gives high priority to the agriculture, fisheries and livestock development. The surplus production is stored by government bodies and also by NGOs for the lean seasons. The food loss during the storage also needs special attention. You must have also seen sometime the damages caused to the crops and food items by insects, rodents, weeds etc. or even the crop diseases are responsible for the loss of the produced crop. Now you must be curious to know at this stage that can't we stop this? How can we protect our produce or the grains which we have got after a lot of effort? You must be familiar with some insecticides and pesticides which are used for the protection of our crops. However, these insecticides, pesticides and herbicides cause soil pollution. Hence, there is a need for their judicious use. So, let us know more about pesticides. Prior to World War II, many naturally occurring chemicals such as nicotine, which was coming by planting tobacco plants in the crop field, were used as pest controlling substances for major crops in agricultural practices. But during World War II, DDT was found to be of great use in the control of the malaria and other insect borne diseases. Therefore, after the war DDT was put to use in the agriculture also to control the damages caused by the insects, rodents, weeds and other crop diseases. However, due to the adverse effects its use has been banned now in the India and other countries. Pesticides are basically synthetic toxic chemicals with ecological repercussions. The repeated use of the same pesticide or similar pesticides can also give rise to the pests that are resistant to that particular group of pesticides, thus making the pesticide ineffective. Therefore, as insect resistance of DDT increased, the other organic toxins such as eldrin, D-eldrine were introduced in the market by the pesticide industry. But most of the organic toxins are water insoluble and non-biodegradable. These high persistent toxins are therefore transferred from lower trophic level to the higher trophic level through the food chain. And this is shown in the figure where you can see that humans are at the top of this trophic chain and are getting more and more of these pesticides through their food chain. Over the time, the concentration of toxins in the higher animals reach a level which causes serious metabolic and physiological disorders. In response to the high persistence of chlorinated organic toxins, a new series of less persistent or more biodegradable products called organophosphates and carbamates have been introduced in the market. But these chemicals are severe nerve toxins and hence more harmful to the humans. As a result, there are reports of some pesticides related deaths of agricultural field workers. Now insects have become resistant to these insecticides also. The insecticide industry is engaged in developing new groups of insecticides, but one has to think is this the only solution to the pest menace? These days pesticide industry has shifted its attention to the 
herbicides such as sodium chlorate and sodium arsenide and many others. During the first half of the last century, the shift from the mechanical to chemical weed control had provided the industry with flourishing economic market. But one must remember that these are also not environmental friendly. Most herbicides are toxic to animals but are not as persistent as organochlorides. These chemicals decompose in a few months like organochlorides. These two have become concentrated in the food web. Some herbicides can cause bird defects. Studies have shown that corn fields sprayed with herbicides are more prone to insect attack and plant diseases than the fields that are weeded manually. Pesticides and herbicides represent only a small portion of the widespread chemical pollution. A large number of other compounds that are used very regularly in chemical and industrial processes for manufacturing activities are finally released in the atmosphere at one point or the other or in one form or the other. In addition to the above, the industrial waste is also responsible for the pollution. So, let us have an insight about that also. Industrial solid waste are also sorted out as biodegradable or non-biodegradable waste. Biodegradable waste are generated by cotton mills, food processing industries, paper mills and textile factories. The non-biodegradable wastes are generated by thermal power plants which produce fly ash, integrated iron and steel plants which produce blast furnace slag and steel melting slag. Industries manufacturing aluminium, zinc and copper also produce mud and tailings. The fertilizer industries produce gypsum, hazardous waste such as inflammables, composite explosives or highly reactive substances are produced by these industries which deal in metals, chemicals, drugs, pharmaceuticals, dyes, pesticides and rubber goods etc. So, lots of industrial pollution is there. The disposal of non-degradable industrial solid waste if not done in a proper and suitable manner can cause serious threats to the environment. New innovations have led to different uses of the waste material. Nowadays, fly ash and slag from steel industry are utilized by the cement industry. Large quantities of toxic waste are usually destroyed by controlled incineration, whereas small quantities are burnt along with the factory garbage in open bins. Moreover, solid waste if not managed effectively affect the components of the environment. Here you may like to know about waste recycling. The fuel obtained from the plastic waste has high octane rating. It contains no lead and is therefore known as a green fuel. Second case is that due to the recent developments made in the chemical and textile industries, clothes are being made from the recycled plastic waste. These will be soon available in the global textile market. In India, other cities and towns also are facing now endless power cuts. So, we can see the lots of uh, garbage lying here and there on the roadsides. But there is a good news that you can also get rid of this garbage waste and create simultaneously electricity out of it. Now, the technology is already in. A pilot plant has now been set up where initially the ferrous metals, plastic, glass, paper, etc. are removed from the garbage and then it is mixed with water, cultured with the bacterial species for producing methane which is commonly known as a biogas. The remaining product is used as a manure and biogas is used to produce a electricity. So, uh, we feel that you must have now understood about all the sorts of pollution which is coming from water, soil or the industries 
and it is uh, time to summarize what we have learnt in this session. We learnt that and after understanding this very interesting aspect of the pollution which should not be there in the environment, there are certain questions for you to answer. What is the difference between the point sources and non-point sources of water pollution? Name some pathogens and diseases caused by them. Are there any sources of water pollution in your area? Find about them. We hope that you have found this session very interesting. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you.